Hello and thanks for clicking this video. So today I will be sharing with you some hamster hacks that I use. I've been owning hamsters for like maybe like two or three years and there's quite a few little hacks that I use either because I saw someone else do it and I copied them, I read it online or I kind of just came up with it on my own. So I'm going to be sharing those hacks with you and hopefully they are useful to you. And I promise you there's at least one hack that I'm going to share with you that you've not heard of before. Like I have a very randomized list of hacks either way let's get started okay so some of my hacks so obviously as you probably know hamsters need hideouts which is just like little little caves little homes little place they can just go in and hide so i use a variety of different random items for hideouts one being a mug so a mug can pretty easily be a hideout just tilt it on its side and there Obviously get one big enough for your hamster, but you could fill it with different substrates or bedding or tissue or anything like that. Just place it and your hamster can hide out in a mug. Another hideout you can use is a jar. Now this is a pretty small jar because Nyla, my hamster, is really small. But if you have like a Syrian hamster, you maybe need a bigger jar, like a jam jar or something. But again, same thing, clean it out. You can put it on its side, fill it with different substrates or bedding or just leave it as it is and there cute little hideout. Jars and mugs are maybe some things you already have around your house. So if you're struggling to find some hideouts, just pop on in the kitchen, grab a cute mug and put it in your hamster's cage. And if you live with your parents, it's free. You just got a free hideout. Nice. Okay. Other hideouts I use. This is a plant pot. I hate the feel of plant pots, but either way, terracotta pot, plant pot, whatever you want to call it. Again, you can place it on its side and hide out fill it with stuff don't fill it with stuff or whatever also terracotta and this type of material is good for like filing your hamster's nails down so it's like extra little bonus right another hideout that i use this one you might have to be a little more careful with but oh there's a lot of hideout-esque things that go in fish tanks so I sometimes in the pet store go to like the fish tank section and look at little hideouts that Nyla could fit into. So I have this SpongeBob hideout. Yes, it's for a fish and for a fish tank. It, it's pretty small, so I don't think this would be suitable for a Syrian hamster, but there are like other fish tank hideouts that could work for a hamster, but you just have to be cautious that they don't like chew it because obviously it's not made from stuff that's safely chewed for hamsters. But yeah, Nyla sometimes likes to go in here. So one thing to consider is like going to the fish tank aisle. Another hideout, I think it's called like a candle essence tea light little situation. I found some at the dollar store. So this is Nyla's little hideout. That's, it's filled with food right now. <laughs> what it's original purpose is, I think you put a candle in here and maybe an oil up here and it does something, I don't really know. But either way, Nyla fits in it and she uses it as a hideout and clearly a place to store all her food. Um, so yeah, you can get bigger ones for Syrian hamsters and stuff like that. Um, and it's a nice like different texture. I don't know, like smooth clay or something. I don't really know. Also, another hideout that can be used is cardboard. Just go through your recycling and cut out a little hideout and there you have one so this is one cardboard hideout i use you just cut it really short cut a little opening and there nyla uses this hideout when she's in her little carrier cage so, so yeah it's just that and she uses it and it's really good those are different options obviously you can like look in a pet store or amazon or something like that and there is like hideouts that are intentionally made for hamsters but there's also a lot of other like random things you can use for hideouts and depending on your situation they're free another little hamster hack i use is kind of using random items for hamster dishes where they're gonna like eat and drink from some little items i use as water dishes would be tea light holders tea light little things um so their initial use is to hold little like tea lights candles 
but they are small enough and suitable for being little like water bowls for hamsters. So obviously give them a good wash. I usually fill mine to the brim because Nyla is a bit small. So I don't want her to be like digging in for like a half filled water bowl. And these work perfectly as little water dishes, easy to clean and everything like that. So yeah. Another water dish I use is an egg holder. I think that's what it's called, I'm not really sure. But here, this is one of the egg holders I've had since I was like born, I don't know. The reason I decided to use this as a hamster bowl is mainly just because it's so cute. Again, filled water to the brim as this is a bit taller than these ones. So Nyla has to like stand up to drink. Some things I use as food dishes would be an ashtray. I found this in the dollar store. Um, sometimes when I'm feeding Nyla outside of the cage just to like bond with her and play with her. I put her in this and with all the food and it's kind of a vibe. Or I just put food in here and then I can put this in the cage and she can go in here to get the food and everything like that. So yeah, easy to clean, pretty cheap at the dollar store. Another little plate thing I use would be a terracotta plate, plant pot plate, plant pot plate. Oh my gosh, plant pot plate. <laughs> okay i can't say that but either way um so yeah again right now there is just some herbs and chews in it but again i can easily put food in it or some sprays and just put in the cage again this type of material can like file your hamster's nails down so it's kind of a double whammy but yeah so those are some alternative dishes you can use again i'm sure you can find proper like food dishes and water dishes online or at the pet store but walk on in your kitchen find yourself an egg holder free water dish free water dish all i'm saying okay as you may know it's important for hamsters to get like a variety of enrichment to keep their life more interesting um so one way to do that is through textures so there can be different textures like sand and different types of bedding like wood shavings or paper-based bedding different like coconut fibers or dirt or stuff like that all different types of textures so i do have coconut fiber paper-based bedding and sand as different textures in nyla's cage but also i use coasters to be different textures i will show you all the different coasters that i have in nyla's cage and their different textures okay so one common coaster i guess would be a marble coaster so this i just have on one of Nyla's hideouts and I put a water dish on top so she can feel the different texture when she's going to get a drink of water or just walks across it and everything. I found it like a home sense type of store. I also have one in the sand pit. So I just have these like dotted around the cage. So it's like a more interesting, more interesting life with a marble coaster. Another type of coaster I have is cork. Found this one at the dollar store. Now I know you can buy like proper like cork mats or something for hamsters online but they're expensive so went to the dollar store got like a big pack of these and again i just put them on top of hideouts or where water dishes go or stuff like that so it's you know different texture make her life a little more interesting another coaster i have is a slate coaster i got this at like a craft store these are harder to find and a bit more expensive um but yeah this texture is also good for filing down hamster's nails which if you know nyla's nails grow really long and it's really annoying so i've been trying to get her more textures to file them down so yeah again dotted around where water dishes go stuff like that more interesting texture um i don't have any wooden coasters in nyla's cage but you definitely could use that again being cautious with what chemicals the wood was treated with i guess do have this wooden thing it's supposed to be like a little shelf for a bathroom or something like that but oh oh gosh okay <laughs> um so nyla has decided to join the video and if you see a balding patch on her that's because she's balding she's okay is there's no rash or infection but yeah okay so yeah this is just a wooden little platform that i'm using that was bought at like a home sense type store also wood kind of can be like a wooden coaster but yeah okay so those are different little textures i have to use in nyla's cage found it mostly like dollar stores and stuff like that okay nyla is joining us for this next part 
of my hacks. As some of you may know, when you get a hamster, you have to tame them as they're not that domesticated or friendly with people. So when you're taming your hamster, I know I dealt with this and some other people deal with this, is like this like initial fear that your hamster is gonna bite you. And they might, that's part of the taming process. Their bite isn't too hard or painful or dangerous or anything. It can draw blood um, and be like kind of like a pinchy feeling. But when you're first dealing with a hamster, it is scary that you're gonna get bit because they do move really fast and you get antsy and it's kind of stressful. I don't know, when I first got a hamster, I was really stressed that they were gonna bite me. I like couldn't even pick it up to put it in its new cage. Like I was freaking out. I do have a video of that. I don't know if I'm gonna share it. Oh, it's coming out, it's coming out. No, don't come out. Please, stop panicking. I'm panicking. I was freaking out first time I got hamster just cause it was gonna bite me. Cause so obviously you have to tame hamsters so they don't bite you. But I do have hack. Now, this might be a little controversial so I want to say this very clearly. If you are scared of your hamster biting you and they start to bite you or you see they're about to bite you, one thing you can do is blow a gentle breeze in their direction, right? This is not a punishment for your hamsters. Hamsters don't understand crime and punishment or that type of thing. It's just to distract them from biting you. I read this online, I tried it and it worked because one time, my previous hamster bit me. I freaked out. My body just had a natural reaction. And I kind of, I kind of chucked the hamster. I was still in the cage, but it bit me. My hand like kind of jerked. The hamster flew off my hand and banged into their cage wall. They were fine. They like shook it off and just went back to borrowing or whatever. But that's not a good experience because now you're kind of showing your hamster you're even more untrustworthy and it, you're not a safe place if you're kind of like throwing and chucking your hamster or like flinching a bunch or anything like that. So to make the whole process less stressful and antsy and high energy intense, just blow like a gentle breeze to your hamster when they bite. And this is just to avoid your hand making a swift movement that could like end up chucking your hamster or anything like that. It sounds really bad, but like, if you know, if you've had that fear of your hamster biting you and have had bad interactions with that, you kind of know what I'm talking about. So I don't want you guys to mistake this for like, don't spit, don't spit at your hamster, don't spit in their face, don't blow like a really like forceful, harsh airflow, nothing like that. Just like you're gently, blowing out some like blowing out a candle and it will distract your hamster from biting you this has worked with nyla it was very helpful because the fear of being bit lessened so i was able to be more calm and tame nyla easier all i did was pretend this is nyla oh my gosh she's about to bite me that's it and then she'd kind of flinch away from biting me get distracted and then I have time to either give her a treat to distract her put her back in her cage or playpen or something like that so that's just a more calm way of dealing with the situation of your hamster biting you I don't want I don't want people to get twisted I understand if you think that's kind of weird or bad but this is not to hurt your hamster or to teach them like oh if you bite me I'm gonna blow in your face or something like that nothing like that it's purely just to distract them from biting you so your fear of getting bit is lessened. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say on that. Here are some other just general tips. You probably already know that hamsters are nocturnal or crepuscular or whatever. They stay up in like the evenings, mornings, and through the night, usually when you're sleeping. But um, if you know, I usually have the same sleep schedule as Nyla. I'm usually just up at night and I sleep through the day and I'm sure I'm sure I'm not alone in that situation. So I don't like to have my lights on during the night because then it's gonna make Nyla think it's the daytime, but I still wanna see what I'm doing because I'm up and everything like that. So I have LED lights, which I'm sure like most of you do. So what I do is I just turn on the red light. In the red lights, I can see what I'm doing almost like perfectly fine, I can see everything or whatever. Um, but for hamsters, according to Google, they can't see red light. So it's almost like it's dark for them. 
just what Google said. And I've been going by it and it kind of works. Nyla's up and around in the red light, acting as if it was dark. So yeah, obviously having dark, all light soft environment is best for hamsters when they're active. But if you gotta do what you gotta do, use the red lights. If you're struggling to determine when to clean your hamster's cage, there's a good like, I don't know, when it smells bad or every month or something like that. But another telltale sign could be if you notice where your hamster usually likes to sleep. Either they have a designated hideout or a designated burrow that they have. And when that changes, it's probably time to clean your hamster's cage because the other place got too dirty for them to live in and they moved out. Now, I did like a quick little Google search on this and in the wild, that's what they will do in real life because obviously they don't have anyone cleaning their burrows for them. So they'll create a burrow and once it gets too dirty to continue living in, they will just move to a different burrow. Maybe in this case, that means you've left your cage a bit too dirty for a bit too long, but it's definitely time to change your hamster's cage. That's something I Googled really quickly and I noticed with my hamsters. I have a designated spot there, it would change. And then I would check that designated spot and yes, it was very dirty and time to clean the cage. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's not a foolproof method. Do not wait until your hamster moves to a different location because that could be too long, I don't know. but. Is definitely something to like keep in mind my final hamster hack for you is a little lesson on how to make your own treats slash chew toys so all you're gonna need is a little piece of wood i got this wood at um like the dollar store it's just a little bag of them or literally anything anything that you would deem safe for a hamster to kind of chew on a little bit you also need some flour water and some seed mix so with my free mug, I'm gonna make it in here. All we need is a little bit of flour. Oh, oops. I actually don't know how much. Oh man, that's too much. A little bit of flour, if you can see. We're just gonna put a little bit of water in and then mix it up. Making sure the paste that we're making isn't too runny. Okay, so that is the paste. We are left with i'm gonna set that aside now in our little ash tray you know um we are gonna put some seed mix just a little bit of seed mix so this is our little ash tray of seed mix so what we're gonna do now i'm going to cover the wood in the paste oh gosh this is gonna get so messy oh maybe okay this paste could have had a bit more flour but it's okay Oh gosh, it's getting actually so messy. It's probably best to do this in the kitchen, but I'm too lazy to get up and go to the kitchen. Here we have our paste covered wood. Okay, and now all we're gonna do with it is shove it in our little seed mix and kind of just like saute it, you know? I actually don't know what saute means, but okay. We're just gonna kind of roll it around and the seed mix is gonna now stick to the wood. And this is our final product. So what you do with this now is you shove it in the freezer. And once it's now nice and frozen, you can give it to your hamster. It's good for their teeth. It's entertaining. Um, it's a nice little treat. I don't do this too often, mainly just cause I'm lazy. I'm just gonna shove this in the freezer and I will insert some future footage of Nyla having a go at it. For today, those are all the hacks I have for you. If you have any of your own hamster hacks, please leave them in the comments below. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful or entertaining or interesting or any of those things. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. That's pretty much it.